Hi guys, we're now going to cover AWS organizations. So AWS organizations helps you to centrally govern and administer environments across AWS, so multiple AWS accounts. It helps you to centrally manage billing, so you can have one billing account. It allows you to control access, compliance and security and share resources across multiple AWS accounts. You can also automate account creation and that's through the AWS Organizations API. You can create groups of accounts to reflect business needs and apply policies to these groups for governance. And we're just gonna have a look at that shortly. So you can also simplify your billing by setting up a single payment method for all of your AWS accounts. Now, lots of organizations do have many AWS accounts. They might have one for production, they might have an account for development, they might have accounts that are for different departments within the organization or different business units. So being able to create a kind of hierarchy of accounts that you can apply policies to is one thing, that's really useful. And then simplifying the billing by having a central billing account is another really useful thing you can do. Now there are two key feature sets, one's called consolidated billing and the other's called all features, which gives you everything else. And we'll see what that means shortly. Now for consolidated billing, one of the things you need to understand is there are some cost benefits here. So in AWS, there are discounts for when you use certain amounts of a service. So for instance, with S3, if you use a certain amount of storage, you pay one rate. If you use a lot more storage, you pay a slightly lower rate. Now with consolidated billing, one of the things that you also get is the ability to aggregate the usage of, let's say all your S3 storage across all your accounts and whatever that total aggregated storage volume is, you'll pay any discounted rates that are associated with that volume of storage. Now, the key thing that I want to concentrate on teaching you today is the service control policies and how these apply to accounts and also tag policies, but mainly we're gonna cover the SCPs. So this is an example of a hierarchy where you would actually have your master account up here and then you can create organizational units so think of these as organizational folders that you can then put your accounts into. So you create OUs, where here we have OU1, OU2, and OU3. And then in each of those, we've got an account or multiple accounts. And we then create this thing called a service control policy. Now, what SCPs do is they define the AWS service actions that are available for use. These don't grant you any permissions. You have to be granted permissions through IAM policies. However, what they do do is define whether what you've been granted in your IAM policy is even something you can do or not. We'll have some examples to make this clear. But the first example I'll just explain to you now is if you have a service control policy that applies to an organizational unit that does not allow people to launch a specific type of EC2 instance, then even if you have a root account or an account with full administrative permissions, if you're sitting in an account that has that OU or that SCP applied to it, you're not gonna be able to launch that particular instance type. And we'll actually see this in action in the labs. Now what a tag policy does is enforce rules around tagging. So you can specify you know, what type of capitalization, what length of tags, what resources should have a tag applied to them, all that kind of thing. So tag policies are a way to enforce best practices for usage of tags across all of your accounts. So let's look into a bit more detail on service control policies and what the effects are on permissions. Now in this example, what we have is we have a root account at the top here. So this is our master account underneath here. So the root is the OU and then the master account is underneath the root and you have a service control policy. Now this is the actual JSON code that is used to define a service control policy. So you write it in this format. Now these examples down here are not written in that format. I've just simplified it so I don't have to paste a bunch of code all over the screen. But this is a very simple one and this will be created by default when you enable AWS organizations. And what it does is has the effect allow, action, anything, a wildcard, resource, any resource. So this is not restricting anything. But what we can then do is apply 
service control policies that are more restrictive down in the hierarchy somewhere. So in this case, I have a service control policy here. And I've just simplified what this SCP is going to do. We're going to actually create this in a lab so you'll see the real JSON code. But the effect is that it's going to deny the action EC2 run instances against any EC2 instance if the string does not equal T2 micro. So in other words, if you're trying to launch anything other than a T2 micro instance, it's going to deny you. So if you have a user in account A here, and they have full administrative permissions, they can do anything in the account, it doesn't matter. They won't be able to launch anything but a T2 micro instance because this policy is applied to an organizational unit that they're inside. Now, this organizational unit over here, OU2, has a separate account in it. And for the example here, what I've said is that I've applied an SCP which allows EC2 run instances on any resource. So in effect, this is allowing any you to launch any EC2 instance. So what do you think is going to happen? Well, it doesn't matter that this account has this SCP that allows the users to launch EC2 instances because somewhere in the hierarchy, it's right here, is a policy that doesn't allow. Now, the most restrictive policy will apply. So in this case, even though you've explicitly allowed the EC2 instances to be run at this level, at this level, you've got a deny rule and the deny rule will take precedence. Now, this is just one more slide. This is actually what we're gonna set up now. So I've got a account, it's actually my DCT Labs account. I have a second account. I'm gonna create an organizational unit. I'm gonna apply a service control policy that doesn't allow users in that account to launch any type of EC2 instance except a T2 micro. So let's head over to the console and we're gonna build this out. I'm in the AWS management console and we can find AWS organizations under management and governance. If you don't have an organization already created, then you just see the splash screen and you just choose create organization. And there's really nothing else that you need to do here. You just choose create organization and it will create the first organization for you. And it'll actually have the account in the console here so you can see digital cloud training labs. Now, if you choose organize accounts, this is where we can see a hierarchy. Now, in this case, we don't have anything. We've just got the root, but you can now create your hierarchy in here. And you can also see policies. So we've got service control policies and tag policies. And if we choose each one of these, we need to enable it first. So I'll enable service control policies, and then I'm gonna go into tag policies and enable tag policies. Now, what I want to do now is we're gonna add another account. So the way we do that is we actually going to invite an account. You can see you can create an account as well, but we're just gonna invite an account and I'm gonna put in the account number and just choose invite. And what will happen is the invitation now gets sent and we need to go to the other account and accept that invitation. Now, what will happen is you'll be emailed a invite to the email account that's associated with that account that you've just invited. Now I've logged into that account on a, another private browsing window and I'm just pasting in the URL that I was given in the email I received. So you can just click on the link in the email. And what I need to do is I've got to log into this account. So this is DCT Labs 2. And now that I'm logged in, we can see that I have an invitation from another account, the DCT Training Labs. And so now that I'm logged in, we can see that we have an invitation to join an organization from Digital Cloud Training Labs. So I'm just gonna choose accept and confirm. And now the DCT Labs 2 account is also associated with the organize, same organization. So if I come back over to here and let's go back to accounts and the screen's refreshing and we can now see that we have two accounts and they both have the same name but these are definitely two different accounts. So what I want to do now is set up the organization with an organizational unit that I'm going to put the DCT Labs 2 account into and the service control policy here. So first off, let's go and create the organizational unit. So we're gonna to head to organize accounts, click on the root, 
and then you can create a new organizational unit and I'm just going to call this OU1. So now we have the OU, I'm going to choose the second account and I'm going to move it into OU1. So if we now go into that OU, we can see that we have this second account. So that's the structure set up. We now need to create a service control policy that denies people from the ability to launch instances other than the T2 micro. So I'm going to show you where to find some service control policies. So let's just search for service control policy examples. And here we have some example service policies. Now you'll see there's 13 different examples here. And the one that we want to use is this one. Example 10, require Amazon EC2 instances to use a specific type. So if we click on that, we'll come down and this is the service control policy that we want to apply. So you can copy that or you can click on the little button up here. And this SCP enforces that any instance launches not using the T2 micro are denied. So what we can do now, we can come back, we can go to policies, service control policies. We can create a policy. And I'll just, I'll go back and let you know about that, um, the policy that exists there already that's created by default. And we can just call this allow only T2 micro. And what I'm going to do is just override this policy here. I'm just going to paste in the JSON code and we can now choose create policy. And that's been created. Now let's just have a look at this one here. So we've got the full AWS access policy. This is created by default. And let's just have a look at the policy. This is the one we saw in the slide that allows basically every action on every resource. So now that we've got the policy, we need to apply it to our organizational unit. So we can choose the OU, go to service control policies, and we're going to attach the allow only T2 micro. So you can see because it's in a hierarchy, the full AWS access is attached to this OU, but because the most restrictive policy will be applied, applying this allow only T2 micro will restrict access to, um, to ensure that we can only launch T2 micro instances. So the most restrictive policy will apply. So what we can do now that we've applied that is let's go back to our other organization. So this is DCT Labs 2. And I'm going to go to EC2 and let's try and launch an instance. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and let's just choose a T2 large. And we can just create a configure a security group so it doesn't try and create one for us. But this shouldn't work anyway. So let's just have a look and see what happens. So let's click on launch. And we've got to create a key pair for this region. So let's just go in and create a key pair. I'm just going to call it my new key pair download and let's launch and there we go we get the launch failed so it says you're not authorized to perform this operation so obviously that's because of that policy now I'm logged in with an administrative account so I have full privileges to AWS but I'm not able to launch that instance of course I can go in and let's just try and launch another instance let's just choose a t2 micro and this should work fine so we just go back and stop it from creating new security groups and I'm just going to launch that instance and that's no problem so we can launch t2 micro instances but we can't launch anything else so that's exactly what we wanted to achieve so coming back and looking at this diagram we have our master account DCT labs we have our DCT labs 2 account within an organizational unit and we've applied a policy and we've only allowed people to launch t2 micro instances so that's it for this lab. Let's just go back. And what we're going to do is just clean this up. So I'm going to terminate this instance. I'm going to go back to my master account. And what I can do here is I can detach that service control policy. And I can quite easily go in and remove this account as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to remove the account. And I'm going to leave the organization set up, but you can also just delete the organization if you need to. You would do that by going into settings and choosing delete organization. Now, I'm aware that many of you won't have two accounts, so you might not have been able to follow along, 
but at least through viewing this lab you'll have a good understanding of what AWS organizations are and also the key thing for the exam is just to understand how the SCPs are applied you know and what takes precedence so remember the most restrictive policy takes precedence